In the previous episode, we embarked on securing a Gingonic application by implementing user authentication. We started with a basic app displaying blogs accessible to anyone. To restrict access, we introduced authentication, beginning with creating sign-up and login templates and corresponding APIs to handle user registration and login processes. Through these steps, we ensured that passwords were securely hashed before storage, checked for email uniqueness, and set up user sessions upon successful authentication. This foundational work prepares our application for the next level of security, authorization middleware and changing views based on authentication, which we'll dive into in this episode. Stay tuned as we continue to enhance our app's security and user management. Here is an example of a custom middleware in Jin documentation. This is the signature of the middleware. It returns the handler function. Let's copy this code. For middleware, we will add a new directory called middlewares. Let's add a file here, say auth.go. The package is middlewares. Let's paste the copied function here. We will name it auth middleware. Let's remove this code. C.next calls the next middleware. If this is the last middleware in the chain, next will pass the context to the handler function. This part of the code is called after the handler. We don't need this. Let's implement the middleware now. We will read the session to understand if the user is logged in. Get the session. Now get the session value of the user ID that we have set in the sign up and login handlers. This returns an interface. Let's receive it in a variable session ID. If there is no session, let's abort with the status unauthorized. Get the user ID by converting the session ID to uint. Now that we have the ID of the user, let's check if the user exists in the database. Let's go to the model and implement this functionality. Say, the function name is user from ID. It takes the ID of the user as an argument and returns the pointer to the extracted user. This is a simple function so we will fast forward its implementation. Let's go back to the middleware. Get the user using the function we just implemented in the model. If the user does not exist, abort from here like we did earlier. Not set the user ID in the context so that the handler functions can use it. This step means the user's session is present and is authenticated to use the APIs. Let's go to main.go file. Here is the list of routes. 
These APIs are related to session management. We don't need to add the middleware to these APIs. We will add the middleware in the other two APIs. Let's add it here. and in this APIs as well. This looks a little repetitive. Let's create a group, blogs. The path of the group would be slash blogs. We will add the middleware here. Let's use this group for the blogs related APIs. Now run the server. We will try hitting slash blogs API. There is some problem, let's inspect. Refresh the page. There has been an internal server error. Let's check the server log. Here it says, key sessions does not exist. My bad, I forgot to initialize the session store. Let's do that. Create a new store. For now, we will use memstore for its simplicity. We will name this store Secret. This has to be a slice of bytes. We need to add the session as a middleware. Let's name the session Blogs. Now, we add the store we just created. There is something wrong here. The memstore package is not installed. Let's install it. Now, our session store is ready. I think the session key we are using in the middleware and the handler functions are different. Here, in the middleware, we have user ID with a lowercase d. In the controllers, it is with the uppercase d. Let's fix this. Now restart the server. Now, when we hit blog's URL, we receive 401 unauthorized. This is obvious as we are not signed in. We need to sign up or log in. Let's create a new user. Let's fill in these fields and submit the form. And we got 404. 
This is when we are redirected to Blog's index page. Here the HTTP method is post. It should be get. It is sending post because it has been redirected from form submission handling. On JIN documentation, they provide a resolution to this issue. We need to use status found. Let's make changes to the code in the sign up and login handlers. Restart the server and submit the login form. Now the redirect works. The pagination on the blog page works as well. On the applications pages, we would like to show login, sign up or log out buttons on the top. These buttons will show up based on the existence of the session. For this, we have added some code in the header template. We have added this div block. If the key user ID exists, we will log out button. Else we will show login and sign up buttons. Login button goes to this URL and sign up goes to this. Since the logout API is of HTTP type delete, we cannot call it directly from HTML. So we have this JavaScript function. Let's look at it. This is the function implementation. Here is the URL and the method. On success, it redirects to this URL. Let's get back to the middleware. Here we have set user ID in the context for the handlers to use. Let's go to the blogs controller and make use of user ID from the context. We will read the context and send the user ID to the template so that it can be used in the header to show the right buttons related to the session. We read the user ID using getUint method. Let's do the same in the other handler also. Let's double check the key user ID. These keys look different. In the controller we have an uppercase U and in the middle where it is lowercase. Let's fix this. Restart the server. Notice on the top it has login and sign up buttons as the user is not logged in. Submit the login form. Now as the user is logged in it shows logout button. Click it. Nothing happens. Let's check. It is using method delete to redirect to the login URL. Let's check the handler. Here, we are redirecting to the login URL which is not required as logout is called from the JavaScript and the redirection is handled there. Let's just return with the appropriate status code. Now try it again. First, we need to log in. Logout button persists on different pages. Great. Logout works this time. Today, we delved into adding authorization middleware and session management to our Gingonic application. 
We encountered and solved challenges like user session checks, HTTP method nuances, and UI adjustments based on authentication status. Through debugging and refining our approach, we've significantly enhanced the app's security and user experience. Stay tuned for more insights on elevating our app's functionality in future episodes.